Wholesaling exploded during the Industrial Revolution as mass production became more efficient and these things called locomotives were invented to transport goods even quicker. Today, wholesaling is all around us. You can see examples of this anytime you go to a big box store like Walmart or Target. The big box store is buying products directly from the manufacturer at a reduced rate, jacking up the price and reselling them directly to you in smaller quantities at their store. My goal by the end of this video is to take you from this side of the business model to the middle where you can begin making money wholesaling products on Amazon. So by definition, wholesaling is the act of buying goods in bulk from a manufacturer at a discounted rate and selling them to an end consumer for a higher price in smaller quantities. Simply put, a wholesaler is the middleman between the manufacturer and the end consumer. And on Amazon, there's surprisingly a lot of sellers actually doing this. 26% of all sellers on Amazon participate in this business model, making it the second most popular. So the question is, why is it so popular? Well, some of the main reasons why it's so popular is because you don't have to worry about creating a brand from scratch, from the ground up, and you don't even have to worry about creating your own listing on Amazon. It's also advantageous because you can join existing listings that are already in high demand with thousands of reviews versus starting from the ground up with zero reviews. This is exactly what we'll be learning in this course and how you can leverage Amazon FBA to accelerate this entire reselling process. So let's start off with the first step and that is finding a high demand product to resell on Amazon, better known as product research. All right, so step one, and that is product research. For today's course in this tutorial, I'm just gonna be focusing on one particular strategy using the Opportunity Finder in Jungle Scout to you know, source these uh, product niches that have high demand and uh, low to medium competition. Now you'll find out by watching other YouTube videos on how to wholesale uh, that there's different, many different types of uh, strategies that you can apply for wholesaling. This is just one in particular that I think is the most beginner friendly but over time, feel free to use other softwares like Helium 10, Google Trends, you know, and a lot of Amazon integrated softwares that you can use. If you do not have Jungle Scout, there is a link down in the description that you can um, access that and gain a license to that for a discounted rate. So make sure you go ahead and do that. And uh, now we'll progress into the actual opportunity finder. Uh, so the first thing that we want to do is we want to limit the categories that aren't great for wholesaling. Now I've only removed three here and I left the, the, the rest on here. So I deselected appliances, clothing, shoes, and jewelry, and grocery and gourmet food. Um, as you can tell with groceries, it's gonna be very difficult to wholesale that uh, since there's typically expiration dates and there's typically a lot more seller restrictions uh, when it comes to selling those type of those products. For clothing, shoes, and jewelry, jewelry is a gated category. So I just wanna stay away from that for beginners and appliances. I don't foresee you uh, reselling washers and dryers and stoves on Amazon just very costly to do so as a third, third party Amazon seller. So we'll leave all these selected and we'll move over to the right here. So on the right side, these are our filters. I've already put in a lot of the minimum information that we need for the average monthly unit sold. We want this to be greater than 500. So we'll put 500 here where it says min. Monthly search volume, we want that to be greater than 2000. Niche score a seven, which is out of 10. Competition, very low to medium. Um, if you watch my previous tutorials on how to private label, we want this to be very low to low competition. However, if we're wholesaling, we're not so uh, focused on the competition because you know, more than likely we're gonna be reselling on an existing listing that is already established. And that entry to the market isn't going to be as difficult as if you were private labeling. Moving up to the upper right hand corner, we have average monthly price. This is the average sales price for that product niche. We want this to be greater than $20. In some cases, I can see you going down a little bit lower to 15, but just keep in mind, you're gonna be competing with other sellers on that listing. So make sure you give yourself some room. That way you can win the buy box, which is something that we're gonna be talking about later on in this video. 30 day and 90 day search volume trend. You can put something in here. I mean, I really just look for positive trending uh, search volumes, which we'll get into. Uh, so we can leave this blank or you can put you know, five, 10% as the minimum. Seasonality, very low to medium. I am not against selling seasonal products when it comes to wholesaling, like I am for uh, private label products. So that is why I keep this at medium at the highest. All right, lastly, we'll click search down here and then we're gonna be met with probably 100 to 200 different niches that we can take a look at. So I actually found 297 different niches 
And uh, instead of me just running through all this and you know honestly wasting your time, I've already pre-selected the niche that I want us to take a look at. But before I get to that niche, I do wanna at least give you insight as to what I'm looking for. That way you can quickly scan over this entire list um, without wasting your time, hours and hours, just looking through each individual one. So the first thing that I do is I select the monthly search volume. That way I can see it in descending order, starting with the highest search volume for this set of niches, the whole way to the lowest. That is how I have everything set up. You can only do this for one of these columns and I found this to be the most effective because if the monthly search volume is the highest, that usually indicates that the demand is extremely, extremely high. Okay, and over to uh, what I'm looking for next. Again, I'm, we know that our competition is gonna be very low to medium, so don't even look at that column. We know the niche score is gonna be greater than a seven. I don't even look at that column. The other thing that I do look at is just the 30-day search trend. As I'm looking down this list, anything that pops out greater than 100% typically catches my eye, and I'll go over to the left and I'll see what it is. For this product niche, it's Garland Christmas decorations. I'm not interested in that, so I'll move down quickly. My eyes are scanning. I see the next one's 141%. Taylor Swift merch, no. Uh, I'll move down 142%. Dior lip oil, so possibly. So I'll click that, I'll go to the search volume, and I'll look for a, um, a trending line, basically. You take this two years of data, and you're looking for a trending line over time, and make sure that's increasing over time. That's very important to be able to sell these products to make sure that you're not actually on the back end of the curve and uh, reselling a product that is actually declining in, uh, in overall demand. So when I look at this, this is good. I mean, the first 20, throughout 2020, nothing was really coming up for this. This product may have not even existed for all that I know, but this is a good curve because we are increasing in demand over time and somewhat consistent. All right, so that, I hope that gives you an idea. We're not gonna be looking at this product um, we're actually looking at this product, which is glass cups with lids and straws. So now I'm going to just go over this data of what I really like and also some things that I might be a little bit concerned about that I want to check into before fully making an investment into this product niche. All right, so three things that I like right off the bat, uh, just the historical search volume for the previous two years. It's kind of similar to what we just saw in that Dior uh, lip oil. Nothing really throughout 2020 and early 2021. But throughout 2022, we're seeing a very steady increase in demand, which is an obvious indicator of an increasing high demand. Uh, the second thing I really enjoyed was the monthly search volume being so high at 62,000 monthly searches. To put that in perspective, for a uh, private label product, we usually want this to be above about 1,000, 1,500 monthly searches. This is nearly uh, 60 times that. And then lastly, average monthly units sold. This is the number of units that are sold on average per listing in that niche. Uh, this is at 4,381, extremely high. So at this point, I'm gonna click this Amazon logo right here, and this is gonna take us to Amazon so we can look at the uh, listing pages and we can get a feel of what this product actually appears to be, what are some uh, popular designs that people are selling, and if there are any existing listings that we can actually resell on. Once we've found the product or product niche that we're interested in reselling, it's time to head over to Amazon Seller Central to see if there's actually an existing listing that we can resell on. This will also provide us more insight as to what the design should look like and what key features we need to incorporate into that design. All right, now that we're at the page, step one for me is to just really scroll through the entire first listing page and to get a feel of you know, what type of variation in design are people selling, um, are they selling in sets? Are there any unique features that are very popular? So very quickly, I'm just scanning through this. You know, the, the first four that I see are sponsored ones, and uh, those are six, 12 packs of these. But as you can see, they're all very similar. That's one thing that's popping out to me right now. This is the only different design that I've seen thus far, and this is a 20 ounce container with, you know, looks like a white sleeve, maybe made out of silicone. But the rest of these are just clear with a bamboo lid and a straw made of glass. There's a different one, so maybe uh, three, four different variations. So this tells me, as a reseller, we want to be focused mainly on the ones that are you know as common because our opportunity and our goal is to jump onto one of these existing listings or to sell these products generically and to have an identical product. So whenever we start getting into looking for a product to sell from a supplier slash manufacturer, uh, we wanna make sure that we're focusing on this type. That gives me a, a good insight as to you know, what the design of this product will end up looking like. 
Now I'm gonna click uh, Jungle Scout in the upper right hand corner, which is the Chrome extension, just to get a feel of how much uh, these sellers are actually making and how many monthly sales uh, they're obtaining. So I usually skip over the first seven or eight or so because those are usually sponsored and it can skew the data a little bit. So I'll go down to number eight here, which is probably the um, actual number one seller for this product niche. They're making over $327,000 in revenue. The second one, 742,000, 30,000, 25,000. So it's really this main brand here um, is bringing in the bulk of the sales. But if you go down through all the monthly sales for the entire listing page, you know, there's plenty that are making over a thousand sales each and every month with the majority over a couple hundred. So that's another thing I'm looking for. Uh, just very quickly, these are just assurance checks, rolls of thumb to see if this niche is going to work or not. Um, after looking at this and seeing that the majority of listings have over hundreds and hundreds of monthly sales, the monthly revenue is there. It's time to move on to actually finding an existing listing to resell these on. And there's some very important things that we'd be aware of, such as if there are limitations, if we are allowed to actually put our offer on that listing. So let's get into that now. Now I want you to open up your Amazon seller account. And if you haven't even got to this point, uh, make sure you check the cards now. Check out my course where I actually go step by step on how to set up your account, how to get it verified. That way you can uh, get to this point here. To get to this point where you actually can add products, you wanna click the upper left hand corner, corner on your desktop select catalog and then add products and that will take you to this page here. So at this point we want to find an existing listing. I'm going to go back to Jungle Scout. I'm going to copy the product niche, go back to Seller Central and paste that product niche into this. As soon as I click search, Amazon is going to search through their entire catalog for that marketplace in the United States here for any similar products to that. Once we click search, as expected, we are seeing some different variations from what we saw on that first listing page, and that's to be expected. So now that I know I want to sell in this niche, uh, we have to find one of these listings, right? So I'm gonna scroll through here, and what you need to take a look at is on the right-hand side here, there's show limitations. So typically when you click that, you're gonna be seeing this, where it says new condition, collectible refurbished, it might say used. Those are the conditions where um, there are limitations on if you can list your offer and your products on that listing or not. So when I click show limitations, it says new condition, you need approval to list in this brand. This brand and this listing right here is protected through Amazon brand registry. So the only way that I could join this listing is to actually one, sell the identical product, and then two, I'd have to apply to sell. So if I click new condition, I have to go through this entire approval process. Now, if you were this listing and you have some random person like me asking and applying to sell on your listing, what are you gonna to say to them? You're gonna say, no, why would I want more competition on my listing and using my brand? It makes absolutely no sense. So as a beginner, I want you to avoid that. You know, Some people can do that and they go to apply to sell Apple products and just become a new retailer and a reseller for that. That's a lot more complex than something you can grow into, but for now, we're just looking for a listing that we can join that does not have any listing, um, listing limitations for uh, a new product like this. So I'll scroll down. This one's not clear, so I'm gonna skip that one. Then we'll go to this one. It says uh, skinny tumblers, clear acrylic tumblers with lids and straws. You know, that, that's applicable. So you may have to click show variations if they have you know, different colors or different sizes. Um, or they're selling in different sets like this one. This top listing here is the same product, but they're selling in 24 unit sets. The second one here, they're selling in 12 unit sets. All right, so I'll go to the right here. Let's show limitations. And uh, yeah, looking at this, we actually are able to resell our product on this without any limitations. Uh, the collectible and refurbished, don't worry about that because all of your stuff's gonna be new. So let's say we wanted to resell this one that's a 24 pack, select new. We can go ahead, we can sell this variation. Great. We look at the second one, we can do the same, sell this variation. That's what you're looking for right there. Now we have two options. This typically doesn't happen with the variations. Let's look at the one that is um, selling in sets of 12. That way it's less complex and you know less of an investment if we were to sell uh, versus the 24 pack. So at this point, I'm gonna click this hyperlink here to take a look at the listing, just to see how many reviews it has, how many monthly sales it's generating, and just a general feel if this is going to be a dependable listing or not. So I'll click the one that's a 12 pack. 
Now, as soon as I click it, um, the first thing I'm looking for by using the Jungle Scout Chrome extension that's already plugged in here, I'm gonna look at the monthly sales. This one on this listing in particular, and that's for this variation, is selling 621 units each and every month. Again, we want that to be over a couple hundred. It meets that criteria. So that's check number one. Check number two is to look at the reviews. This one's 5,441 ratings, and it looks like it's pretty close to five stars, 4.8 out of five. So that means, you know, this is a very quality listing, quality product. This is excellent. So those are uh, two checks right there. You know, I don't really have a, a, a star rating that I look for, but I want that to at least be above 4.5. Uh, that's very attractive to customers. And if I put my offer on this listing and were to sell the identical products, uh, that would mean, you know, I'd have a great shot of converting a lot of those sales. So that's check number two. And the final check number three, which it just worked out this way. I, I swear I didn't set this all up. But uh, the third thing that we're always looking for is to try to find a listing that is low on stock, which it might say, you know, four left. That way we can jump in there. We can have a stock available before this seller and we can actually go ahead and convert more sales and win the buy box. Uh, for this one, it's actually temporarily out of stock. So, you know, we have an open opportunity right now, opportunity right now if we want to go ahead and resell these. You know, those are all three of my usual checks when I get to the listing. You'll rarely see something that is low on stock or out of stock, especially. So really just these two with the ratings and the monthly sales. Those are really the two main factors that I look at. I'm not 100% sure why this one isn't popping up. The only thing that pops up is the 24 set, and it must be because there's no offers. It says zero used and new, meaning that seller more than likely removed their offer, um, and that variation doesn't really exist anymore. So I, I'm, I'm happy with that 24 unit set. I think personally for this course, it would be very difficult to have your supplier package these in 24 unit sets, and it's also going to be a larger investment because one unit on Amazon is now 24 of these tumblers. So let's scroll down and see if we can find, yep, right there. <laughs> I was gonna say, let's see if we can find another one that has a lower quantity in each set. And this is the skinny tumblers, um, identical listing, but they're selling in sets of four. So let's go to show limitations just to make sure that this is the same and it is. There are no limitations to sell this as new. Okay, I'm gonna bring up that listing just to check it out and um, just run through those same things. So monthly sales, 411, it's a couple hundred, happy with that. I'm gonna scroll down to the ratings. Ratings aren't as good. We have a 4.7 out of five, still really good, and over 3,000, another check. And then this one's in stock, so we don't have that third factor coming in where uh, it's actually out of stock or low in stock. Okay, so I, I say for this example, let's go ahead and try to create a new offer and resell this product. Uh, we, it's going to be a little bit challenging, but I think as a beginner, it's not going to get more complex than this because it looks like we're going to have to include these hello name tags. And we'll also have to include this um, straw cleaner along with four clear tumblers here. Uh, before we get to that, I just want to show you what I mean when, I, when I'm telling you guys we're going to create a new offer on this listing. And you know, if you're not a seller on Amazon, you may have never even looked at this. So on the right side here is the buy box, as you're seeing here, $16.88. It has all the information. Add to cart, buy now. About, I think, I think the statistic is about 75 to 80% of uh, all customers on Amazon purchase products by going through this buy box. And you're probably thinking, there's another way? There actually is. If you scroll down to under where it says add to list, um, it says new and used and the quantity, that could be two, it could be, it could be 10, whatever. Now, if you click that, it's gonna show you all of the existing offers, all the different sellers actually reselling on that listing. Now, there's actually one down here that someone's selling used like new ones of these. I don't know who would want to purchase used tumblers, but someone has that option here. And uh, they're selling it for 1480. So yeah, it is cheaper than the main offer here, but since it's new, that typically overrides uh, any other offers that are used or collectible, and uh, Amazon will place that in the buy box. So this is max find, and I think this mu this might just be um, this may just be Amazon reselling some used products. It actually might not be another seller that's on it. So whenever we do list our product on this listing, it will say two other options. It will say this used one, and then it will show our new one, um, and then we'll get into discussing you know what should we price it as uh, depending on our margin. How are we going to get ourselves to that top spot in the buy box? It's all information we're going to be covering 
later on, once we find this product, we calculate our margins and we really get into the details of this. All right, so now for the, uh, the more difficult part, I'd say, and that's actually finding a supplier, manufacturer, distributor even to uh, you know, make this identical product. We do have a lot of the information. We know it's gonna be 16 ounces. We sell these in sets of four uh, and we have to include you know, the name tags, four name tags and a straw cleaner. If you scroll down, you'll also find some information here on the product dimensions. We wanna make sure that we're identical to that. You cannot resell products that are not identical to the listing. You're gonna be booted off of that listing. Great, so at this point, we have a product that we want to sell. We found an existing listing, and now it's time to go ahead and to find a manufacturer or a distributor to find this identical product. So there are a couple of different ways of doing this. I'm gonna show you a few um, a bunch of different wholesale directories that you can use for this product or any, really any type of generic product that you see on Amazon. The first one is called Worldwide Brands and this has an entire wholesale directory of all these different companies and you can actually go ahead and you can look at um, you know, all these different supplier web pages and find the exact product that you're looking for. Uh, this is a very popular option but the, the really the con of this is that it costs about $200 for lifetime access. If you're gonna be doing this for some time, yeah, I recommend just paying that $200, getting access to this, and it's gonna give you the you know, best suite of suppliers. But my goal here is to make sure that I explain every piece of information to you, and you can also do this with the minimal investment possible because you know your return on investment is never guaranteed. So there's actually some other directories. One that is probably my favorite because it's free, and it also has a lot of different suppliers um, in this directory. That is called wholesalecentral.com. And you can actually just go in here and you can type in, let's just type in tumblers. So right there, we've typed in tumblers and we've had 300 matches from 21 different suppliers. So at this point, before I even really look into the supplier information, I'm gonna scroll down and just look to see if I can find an identical product to those skinny tumblers that we saw. So this is what I mean by the fun part. You know, you're just gonna you're gonna spend up to an hour, two hours just looking for this type of product. The more directories that you have, and the more that you can refine your search, the better. But um, you know, this one's similar. Uh, it does have a design on it. It's custom imprinted. Uh, so we could reach out to them to see if you know they can just sell this as a generic plain item uh, without putting any details or decals on it. So that's one right there. Again, let's keep looking. There's a lot of different ways, but I just wanna share this with you that this is really my first go-to spot is Wholesale Central. And the majority of time, all of these um, suppliers are local and domestic in the United States. Okay, and then I have two others that I just wanna go over and then we'll finally get into actually finding this product. Next is, you know, just use Google and type in the product niche and then also type in wholesale. Otherwise, you might just get, um, you know, Amazon links and Walmart links. And just to accelerate things, uh, I did find one using Google, um, this website called saveacup.com, and they sell these skinny tumblers. Now look at the Amazon listing, skinny tumblers. That has to be you know, probably the same company that's uh, reselling on Amazon. And if you look at this, let me find the white one again. I guess I'll just click this over here. So looking at that, you know, I'm just looking at the appearance wise, it's nearly identical, it's 16 ounces. It looks and appears to be the same product, right? Let's see if we can get a better picture here. All right, so yeah, that looks like the same one, comes with a straw, the threads look the same. Uh, the last thing I'll do just is just to check that the product details and the specifications match up. They're saying that this one is 8.5 inches uh, height and 2.75 inches. Uh, two and three quarters diameter. Let's go back to the Amazon listing. Look at that, 8.5 inches height. And just to confirm the diameter, they may have it on here as the width. So there. that doesn't sound right. It says 10.43 inches wide, 8.5 inches high. I don't think the base or the diameter of the product is you know, larger than the height. So let's see if we can find anything in the A plus content. Here we go. So that's why I always just, you know, use your common sense, think about this before you go ahead and say, no, nope, that's a different product because in their A plus content, which is in their product description, they have 8.5 inches high, 2.5 inches diameter, holds 16 ounces. We go here, 2.75 inches diameter. 
Sorry, for a second I thought that was uh, identical, but uh, it looks like this one might be a little bit larger. Uh, I'm here to tell you that you should not do this. You should not go ahead and purchase this one and resell it on that listing because there's a very minute difference, but just use your best judgment. I'm sure that you could resell this, but I'm not telling you to do so. So at this point, before we even look at the cost and running our margins, I'd move on to a, uh, a different supplier. Now the fourth one is Alibaba.com. I use Alibaba for just about every product um, that I private label. Uh, it's just a great way to find overseas suppliers, especially when you're an independent seller on Amazon. It's tough to meet those margins as you know the very large retailers. So it really gives you an opportunity to go ahead and to meet good margins and to work with some quality suppliers. So let's go to Alibaba here and we're going to type in glass cups with lids and straws. I'm gonna remove wholesale and click search. So as soon as I click search, one of the first ones that I see, this looks like the same exact product. Hold 16 ounces, 8.5 inches high. That looks like one. So I'm going to check out this listing. And the same thing, let's review this listing. Let's go over all the different specifications to make sure it's the identical product. And then we'll start back up. Okay, just to accelerate things, uh, that previous listing that we were just on, uh, that did not meet the requirements. Again, it was a larger diameter, but I did find one uh, in one seller that actually is selling the same product and everything is the same from the diameter to the height to the straws and everything included. So this product would work. Uh, now one thing, when you work on Alibaba, uh, you wanna make sure that the supplier that you're looking at, which is gonna be on the right side here, there's a badge, you wanna make sure that they're verified. If they're a verified supplier with this blue badge, it means that they've been independently inspected by a third party to ensure you know, all their certifications match up, they're an existing and actual business. Um, it just really helps you find a supplier that is of quality and to make sure you're not gonna get scammed. Okay, so now that we've found a listing and a product that we can purchase and resell on that existing listing, uh, we also defined the last two pieces of the puzzle and those were those uh, name tags in the straw. Remember we have to include this with the straw and the name tags. Um, I went ahead, I did find the identical name tags here for 15 cents and I also found some straw cleaners for seven cents. So now we have everything that we need to purchase to create this offer on that existing Amazon listing. We have to decide and to understand better, are we going to be able to profit and to have a decent margin or you know, is this opportunity just an entire bust? So that's what we're gonna move on to next. Now here's one of the most important parts in predicting your success, and that is estimating your margins and your costs. I recommend using Amazon's revenue calculator to understand how much this will cost and to estimate your margins. Okay, let's figure out how much we're gonna profit off of each individual sale and include all of our different costs that are gonna be factored into that. I'm gonna be using Amazon's revenue calculator. This is entirely free as long as you have an Amazon Seller Central account. And it's really gonna break down uh, in the most accurate way what our costs are going to be. So there are three different ways of how you can actually determine your costs. One, you can search the Amazon catalog, which we'll end up doing. We can actually type in the ASIN for that listing right into here, and it's gonna pull all of that information about their product packaging, the product dimensions, the weight, really all that essential information that we need. The second thing is uh, we could define the product. We could incorporate what the package dimensions are, the total weight, what we're gonna sell it as, and it's gonna estimate that. And then lastly is to estimate in bulk. If you have a lot of different products that you want to, to look at in bulk, um, you can do that, but it's not gonna be applicable to this. So let's go back to the listing and we need to find the ASIN. So in the upper left-hand corner here, you just have to click copy ASIN and now you've co copied that. Uh, that is the really the ID number for this listing if you're not familiar with what ASIN is. Another way if you don't have Jungle Scout is to scroll down to the product information and right here it says ASIN, and you can copy and paste that. So we'll go to the revenue calculator, we'll paste that in there and click search, and then just make sure that this is the Amazon listing. Uh, sometimes you know there are small minute errors that can happen and uh, it can actually show a, a different listing. And then also just make sure that unit weight sounds right, two and a half pounds, yeah, I can see that for four of these. Um, package dimensions, seven, seven by 10, okay. Yeah, so that, that sounds right. But if it were to say, you know, 40 inches by 30 inches by 10, I'd, I'd look at this in a little bit more detail because that's gonna give us an inflated storage fee, an inflated FBA fee, and it's not gonna be a true representation of what we'll end up seeing on this listing. 
Okay, so we have that. Let's scroll down to where it says select a program to compare. Uh, we are gonna be using Amazon FBA for this course. You can also use your own fulfillment if you plan to do FBM. So the sales price, this is usually uh, preset at whatever the listing is. The listing is currently at 1688, remember, right here. So let's set our sales price 2% below theirs. And I'll tell you why 2% here in a second. So I'm gonna do 0.98, that removes 2% from that. So we should list ours at 1654. Let's put that in there. And then uh, go back to that 2% idea. So going to the listing, uh, Amazon actually exchanges different offers throughout the buy box uh, routinely. And usually what Amazon does is they take, as long as you're within 2% of the uh, lowest sales price, it'll flop you in there and they'll put you in there so you can have better rotation in and out of the, the buy box. Now you can win the buy box more times than you know other people. And to do that, you wanna make sure that you have the cheapest unit price for your sales price, the cheaper the better. You also wanna make sure that you're using Amazon FBA. And the reason why that is is because according to Amazon, it's the quickest way that you can fulfill goods. The quicker the shipping is and the fulfilling process, the better your chances of winning that buy box. So if you're using Amazon FBA, you're already doing a great job and you don't have to worry about that. The third thing that Amazon looks for is they'll actually look at the uh, seller. So we can look at this seller here, max find, it says sold by, and click that blue hyperlink. And you can see that they are in a very, a very established seller. They have 99% uh, positive feedback in the previous year and over 1300 ratings. That's a lot. And if you're a new seller and you have zero ratings and 0% positive feedback in the past 12 months, uh, more than likely it's gonna be very difficult to win that buy box over this seller, assuming that you're both competitive with the uh, fulfillment method and the price that you're selling this at. So this will be an uphill battle um, if you don't have an established wholesaling account on Amazon, uh, but it's not impossible. Those are just things to look out for. Okay, back to the revenue calculator. We are 2% below that top offer. Uh, and then you want, want to go down here where it says January to September, October to December. This will affect your storage fees because in Q4 of every year, you're going to pay about 2.7 times more in storage fees due to the holiday season. Now, today is December 13th. I'm not going to be able to sell these if I were to until January, probably February at the realistic time. So I'm going to click January through September. This isn't when you're ordering the products. This is when the products are physically going to be stored at Amazon. Okay, average inventory units stored. Let's say for this uh, first order, we're gonna do 200 and just predict we're gonna sell 200 since uh, you know they're selling over 400, 500 uh, monthly units on that listing. Next, we'll come down here where it says cost of goods sold. Um, I'm sure you've seen this as COGS or COGS, people say it differently. This is really just how much it costs you to procure that item, to package it up and to get it to Amazon to be ready to be, be sold. So the first thing we have to do is let's add up our entire unit rate. How much does it cost us to purchase one unit of this? So get the calculator out here. We have, we're gonna order 200 of these, so we're gonna be in this tier here, $1.01. And, and remember, we have to multiply that by four. We're selling four of these. So that puts us at 404 already. Next, we'll come over to the stickers. We need to put four of these stickers on there. They're 15 cents a piece, so that's gonna be an extra 60 cents. So I'm gonna add 60 cents. Now we're at 464. And the last thing is the straw cleaner. We're gonna add seven cents. So 471 is how much it costs us in physical material. So is this 471 our actual cost of goods sold? No, it is not. We need to factor in the shipping from our supplier's location the whole way to Amazon until it's in storage. So that is gonna be factored into this. Now. Usually uh, what I do at this point is I would contact the actual supplier. I get a firm quote for uh, delivery duty paid or DDP shipping inco terms included with my order quantity. And I probably just provide them a California zip code. That way I can go ahead and get a firm quote. Uh, now, just based on weight and from my experience working on this, I'd say it's probably gonna be about 75 units for four of these in shipping. And then for the, you know, the tags and the straw cleaner, can't see that being more than ten dollars or sorry ten cents per unit. So let's add uh, twenty cents for the for shipping for the tag and for the um, the straw cleaner, and then we're going to add seventy five cents for these tumblers. So that is five dollars and sixty six cents for our cost of goods sold. 
we we'll jump back to the revenue calculator, type in 566, and then any miscellaneous costs. Um, this can really be anything. It could be uh, just the overhead cost to your business for each individual unit. You know, Factor anything you want in here because the more accurate that you are right now, the better um, representation of what your profit margin will end up being. So we don't have any other miscellaneous costs. Let's say we sell all 200. Now we are only met with a 3.13% profit margin. Is that good? No, that's not good. <laughs> we want this, ideally we want this to be between 15 to 20%. Very rarely you'll be able to get above 20% and you should really never touch anything that's below 15% because you know, if you do any advertising or if you have extra storage costs over time, it's gonna eat into that margin. So if I were to see this 3%, I would say, no, this is not the right opportunity. It doesn't mean that this product niche um, is gone. It doesn't mean we should start this entire process over. It means we have to do a couple different things. One, we can go back to all the suppliers. We can find a cheaper supplier while you know still having that same quality. Um, some other things we could do is we could find a different listing that is selling the identical product at a higher rate. Because as you can see, if we take this sales price and we increase it to a dollar more, $17.54, you know, we have already doubled our profit margin nearly. So we're at 7.8%. Now, if we wanna to get to that 15 to 20% range, we'll probably have to sell these for around $20. So if we sold this for $20, uh, which is something we still could do if we really wanted to, uh, then we could hit that margin of 17.29%, which would provide us a total net profit of $691. So those are just some things going through my mind of what I would do uh, during this scenario if I ended up seeing that 3%. You know, how can I actually make this work? What can I do? Okay, so after some digging, I was able to get the uh, cost of goods sold down to about $4, close to $4, $4.12. It doesn't quite get me to that 15 to 20% range, but we have it at about 12%, with over $400 generated through 200 units. So let's just move on with the, uh, the course, knowing this information and with this existing listing. The next thing what we have to do is to actually create our offer on that existing listing. So now let's talk about how you're gonna sell these on that existing listing, go through all those steps to actually list your product and create a new offer, and then we can talk about getting your products to Amazon. So we're gonna hop back to Amazon Seller Central. We're going to find that um, ASIN and that identical listing that we were looking at, and that is the four here, quantity four, 16 ounce clear tumblers, and then we'll go over to the new condition and click sell this product. As soon as you click that, you're only gonna see one tab, and that's the offer tab. Since there's already a, a seller on here that probably created this listing, they're the ones who have complete control with the images, the A plus content, the really just about everything on that listing that they have control of. The only thing you have control of is how much you're gonna sell it for, how many you have, and the type of fulfillment method. So really, not a lot. Okay, so we'll come down here to contribution SKU. Uh, this is just a skew. You can make this really anything. I'll name this skinny, sorry, skinny cups. And then quantity for that example, we said we were gonna have 200 and then our listing price. Remember we're 2% below theirs, which is 1654. Is it new? Is it new from the um, OEM, which is the original equipment manufacturer or is it used? For us, it's new. We can't say that it's from the OEM um, because we're not entirely sure where this existing uh, listing is you know where they're sourcing their products from could be this Alibaba supplier or might be someone completely different But be honest here and put in what you think it is Lastly, are you going to uh, do FBM which is fulfilled by merchant meaning you actually go ahead You store all your products and you actually fulfill every order to each customer Or are you going to use Amazon FBA fulfillment by Amazon, which is the second one here so go ahead click that and then uh, we can talk about actually getting your products to Amazon in that shipping process. Okay, so now you're ready to go ahead and to ship your products to Amazon's fulfillment centers. Um, I'll put a link in the cards now of how you can ship directly from China or your overseas supplier to Amazon or another card, which I'll put in a couple seconds here, where you can ship from uh, your location if you were to ship these to yourself and then to Amazon. Now for me personally, if, um, you know, if I'm working with three different suppliers, one for the straw, one for the tags, one for the cup, I'm gonna have all this shipped to my location, my business location, or you can use your house, it doesn't really matter. And then I'm gonna actually set these into um, individual packages so I can put these in the correct sets. Meaning I put four tumblers with four name tags and one straw cleaner. 
At that point, I'll, I'll follow that tutorial to create my shipment plan. I'll label each individual set with uh, an FN SKU label, and then I'll go ahead and I'll use UPS or a, uh, a local carrier to go ahead and get these um, products to Amazon. Okay, and the last thing I wanna leave you guys with is just some expert tips from my experience doing this. Uh, I do wanna say that with wholesaling, you do run a little bit more risk on um, you know, reselling on an existing listing. So going back to that listing that we've been looking at, let's say I were to create my offer, I were to list the product, begin selling them, and I've had success. Maybe the first week I sell 200 units. Everything's looking great, right? Now what can happen is actually this brand owner, which is Strata Cups, they can go ahead and they can um, you know, block their listing from me. That is entirely possible. They can protect their listing if they were to brand this through Amazon brand registry. And at that point, you'd fall off the listing. What does it mean if you fall off the listing? It means you can't rejoin that listing and your inventory is now stuck at Amazon. So you'd have to retrieve your Amazon inventory and then find a way to liquidate it. Now, another option would be to resell these generically using Amazon. What I mean by that is that when you actually create your listing, so we'll create our listing, um, you can select that this product does not have a brand name and it will apply the generic brand name to it, meaning that there's no brand name associated with that product. This works very well for products that, you know, they're not as brand eccentric, such as these tumblers. It's just really just some clear plastic and it's molded into a tumbler. Uh, so you could do it with this. Now, how you do that is to actually go to the Amazon catalog page. Again, go to catalog, add products. Go down to I'm adding a product not sold on Amazon. Once you click that, you'll be asked to um, select the product type, which is really your Amazon category. I would just go to the search bar and type in clear tumblers and drinking cup comes up, tumblers and water glasses. That sounds correct. Click select. And now instead of just being met with that offer tab, you're gonna be met with a bunch of different tabs because this gives you the ability to actually create your listing. So I'd go here, item name, which is your title. I type in your title. And then where it says brand name, go down here where it says this product does not have a brand. You can also go, I don't have a product ID if it's a generic um, item like this. So you can click continue once you create your title here, plastic tumbler for now. Obviously you want a stronger title than that. Title than that. Uh, and then you'd go through the entire process of creating all the different information from your product description the whole way to your images. Now, this is kind of like private labeling, but it's not. It's a way for you to create your own listing but you still have to go through the entire process of creating all your listing content. By doing this, you're not gonna be booted off an existing listing. It's less risky in that regard, but the one thing you have to keep in mind is that by creating a new listing, you're gonna have zero reviews. So, you know, in my opinion, I would just private label this product at that point. But I wanted to show you another way that you can do that in case you do run into that situation where you need to get liquidate some of your products, you can always sell them generically. All right, and the very last thing I swear is uh, do you need a wholesaler's certificate for your state? This does vary state by state. With me in Pennsylvania, uh, there is some fine print that you have to be aware of. Their definition is that a wholesaler is a person or business entity that makes or purchases items to resell to a retailer. This is a little different for us because it says if a wholesaler also makes retail sales, the entity is no longer considered a wholesaler. So if you're selling to the end consumer, you're not necessarily a wholesaler in Pennsylvania's mind. Uh, just make sure you check your local requirements for your state or your country that you're in. Um, just to make sure you, know, you understand if you need this certificate or not. All right, thank you for watching. I hope at this point you know how to wholesale products using a beginner method on Amazon. Make sure you check out my seven hour course if you're interested in private labeling. It goes through the entire seven hours of finding a product, sourcing that product the whole way to the very end of actually making that first sale.